Hey there, my name is Mitchell, and I am the manager of the Bill Nell Art Show. I'm also a student of Mr. Nell's, and I'm introducing you to our YouTube show that shows Bill in his essence. Now, Bill is a veteran of not only just his country, but he's also a veteran of his craft, and he's been painting and drawing ever since he was five years old. And in this show, you're going to get to see Bill create like some of the wonderful things behind me, like this painting here and some of the other ones in this art gallery. You'll get to see that, but you'll see it live in a very Bob Ross inspired light. Now, if you have any questions or comments or maybe how to buy Bill's art, please let us know in the comments section below. And we'll see you really, really soon. Thanks. Notice the canvas is wrapped all the way around the back. So if you don't want to buy a frame, get one that's wrapped good like that. Most of them are nowadays, but the old days, they weren't. They would staple them on the edge. I'm sure y'all have seen that before. Basically, all I'm doing is making little circles. 
all a matter of painting the eye. I guess everybody as a child had set out, spread out on the grass, tried to pick out animals in the clouds. It's a matter of training your eye. And I'm going to take a little, a little color in here. So I got an Indian yellow, and we're going to add a little bit of that. And once again, all I'm doing is almost like a nervous twitch. And you just give it little circles. And this area here is where we're going to start the mountain. Take a two inch horse brush, real fine, and you're going to just hit these clouds, kind of like a spinning motion, very lightly. And just go back and forth, and you're just blending this blues and all these colors together. You see how nice you get up. Out of it. Just go back and forth, and you pick it to your yellow a little bit. You can pull it. See how that blending? That makes a nice blend when you get done. You can always go back and add some more if you want another color in there. If you want like a red sunset. Go in there and add you some. And I'm just going to take some of this off the brush and use it hit, it. hit the sides. This area down here is going to be a lake eventually. Okay, now we're going to have some fun with the palette knife. I paint a lot with that. It's uh, a lot of fun. And you got to figure out where you want these mountains. And what kind of mountain? I'm thinking a couple of Tetons, you know, from Colorado out there. Figuring out where you want these mountains, and you just pull them like this. You pull them down, and you scrape the paint off as you go. Get you some more. We'll put one right about there. Of course, this time of year, in Teton, as you know, they got snow on them. All I'm doing now is removing some of this paint. We're going to make this a lake area, so we want this color down here as well. So I'll just put some in there. You don't have to worry about details for now. We'll just put some in there. And all I'm going to do is just pull this down like so. See how nice it comes out. So remember, you get that white base under there. So as you pull down, see how it's getting lighter. That's what you want. Then you just you just dab at it like that, and that's why they call them the Smoky Mountains. But this is going to be the Tetons. See how just dabbing with the paint that's already on the brush. See how nice that's looking already? Very easy to do. Anybody can paint, just a matter of using that muscle. I'll put some there. A little bit of white on there, and I'm just going to. So, and you let it kind of drag. See how let it drag it very lightly. And it makes it look like snow. You can see how nice that looks. And we barely did anything so far. And doing this. 
same thing again on this side. And if you've been to the mountains, you know that that snow, it'll build up. You'll have, it could be a fall day and have snow on the top of the mountain. It'll be 7 degrees in the valley. And we're going to put a little bit right there. All I'm doing is, I'm just dra letting it drag on there. We're going to add a little color to it. The sun is on this side, and I'm just pulling it the same way. Sometimes I'll, I'll do that. You can go back with the brush, and, and you can blend it a little more if you want. With a very small brush. But you see how it, it, there's a lot of little crevices and stuff in, in the mountain. And, of course, you want to see some of that color in the light we're going to do, so I'm going to add some to that. All I'm doing is just wiping the paint right off of my palette knife. I'm not worried about detail right now. I'm just thinking more of colors, what colors we're going to do. I'm going to put some of that white color in there white paint. But this down here is going to be the lake. And I'm just lightly pulling up. But if you crisscross it like this, and you really get the effect of the lake. See that? How nice that looks. Put a little bit of this color in the sky. Now look. Add a little bit of that pink right in there. Yeah. It's like I had too much yellow, maybe. I think we need a little bit right in here where that sun is hitting. Get rid of some of that yellow. You know what yellow and blue makes is green, so you gotta. Be careful not to get into the blue with the yellow. You end up with a green sky. I don't think we need, we're going to put a few trees in here. And for that, I want a little, we're going to use lamp black. We're going to make like a gray. Think about where they're going to come to. So I'm going to put them right about here. And all I'm doing is basically is just dabbing. You see how the, you take the corner of your brush, you want to hit them this way. And then as you go up the mountain line, take the corner of your brush. Basically, you're just putting in some more paint for the background. You ain't too worried about details again. Painting's kind of like putting a puzzle together. It's a, it's a process step at a time. You get a thousand piece puzzle, well, you know, with the puzzle, you start at the outside and work your way in because you're easy to distinguish what the border is. But, but you can see how neat that is. If you say we got some up in here, See how the I left the light area? You can have the you, you have contrast, the lights and darks. It's just something you got to think about ahead of time. The placement of of your trees. Because if you get them the too much of the same color, they won't stand out. You just want to give a. Hint this tree back there. Sap green. We're gonna use a little sap green in it this time. Sap little sap green. We just kind of wing it. I mean it's your pain, you can do what you want. 
We're going to put in some more trees. This time they're going to be a little closer. Let's say we'll put one right here. And take the corner of my brush now. You want to pull down a little bit. You can actually go either way. See how kind of making it look like a pine tree. And just lightly hit it in a couple places. When you use two colors, it gives it a little more contrast. You see how nice it is? Let's give him a little brother right there. some of this paint down as you notice making it the water line but see how nice that ref reflection comes in it's going back and forth this way kind of like a little small excess in this case it's yellow you put a little red in there a little shimmy in the water there See how nice that blends. And we just add a little color. The colors always look nice in there. Go 
black in it and maybe put in a tree, an old tree that's about to fall down. Let's see. Off in the distance here. Put a few branches on there. Just added two colors. I don't know if you can see this or not, but just put a few twigs on here. Take our inch and a half again, and we're gonna just pull this down into the lake like that. So we want that to shine. Yeah. 